Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan and I'm joined by Dan Bell from HiFX back after a break um, to talk about the currency world. Welcome in, Dan, again. Thank you, thank you. And look, um, I guess the, the, the big topic, um, almost the only topic today, is the US non-farm payrolls um, that we saw out on Friday night New Zealand time. Now some strong jobs growth in the US um, for two months running now mm -hmm. and talk is again turning towards the Federal Reserve beginning to taper in its $85 billion a month bond buying program. Yep. So FOMC meeting um, December 17th and 18th, I'll That's throw right. it out at there. Do you think they will taper? Listen, um, they, they probably should, but they probably won't is, is, is the answer there. So um, as you mentioned, the US employment numbers on Friday night were much uh, were better than expected. So we were expecting jobs growth of about 185,000 new jobs for November, and it came in at about 203,000 new jobs. Uh, and the unemployment rate there um, dropping from 7.3% down to 7%. So that was um, a, a bit of a surprise as well. So a much stronger employment situation in the US. Um, and although that <laughs> probably should be enough to, to see the Fed start tapering some of this, uh, these, this bond purchasing that they've been doing for the last few years, um, they're a pretty cautious bunch. They're, pretty, they're a pretty sort of dovish bunch of uh, central bankers up there in the US. Um, and this is um, Ben Bernanke's last uh, FOMC. So maybe he's just going to let it ride and uh, hand the reins over to, uh, to Janet Yellen and, and she can kick off maybe the, uh, the tapering early next year. Yeah, past the parcel, I guess, um, is a bit of a game there. Um, look, we, we saw some interesting market reaction um, to the announcement on Friday. I mean, obviously, we've we've been sort of expecting that when the, the Fed finally begins to taper, that they will, um, it'll, the, the US dollar will be strengthened, the mm -hmm. Kiwi dollar will weaken. Yeah. We saw the New Zealand dollar fall initially, then rise again. We saw equity markets go up. I mean, what, what's going on out there? What are people thinking about all this now? Yeah, it was a bit of a whippy, whippy night, and, and initially, um, as you say, around midnight on Friday the New Zealand dollar weakened it fell from sort of 80 uh, up over 82 and a half uh, all the way back down to 81.40 uh, after the stronger employment numbers and then it went all the way back up to 82.90 uh, within a couple of hours so uh, that, that sort of price action to me suggests that um, there's probably some major positioning out there and, and some some big flows going on rather than um, you know, some kind of uh, compelling economic uh, reaction that you know we don't know about, because um, yeah, technically, a stronger employment number in the U.S. should lead to higher interest rates in the U.S., which it did, and which will make uh, the New Zealand dollar less attractive relative to the U.S. dollar. And, and as we saw back in um, earlier this year, when we saw that initial reaction to the potential for the Fed to start to to taper and remove some of the stimulus, the New Zealand dollar dropped down to a low of around 77 cents. Um, subsequently, it's been quite strong, but but ultimately higher interest rates, a better U.S. economy should be positive for the U.S. dollar. So whether or not that price action on Friday continues this morning, I doubt it. I think we'll probably start to drift off. Um, but equity markets in the US were strong, so maybe a few people were a bit confused about <laughs> what, what, the, uh, what the numbers actually meant. Mm. And obviously this week in New Zealand we've got the Reserve Bank's um, review of the official cash rate on Thursday. Obviously it's been at 2.5% going back for a long time now. Yeah. Um, no one, I don't think, is really expecting a change in that sense, so it'll all be around uh, what they say rather than what they do. Exactly. Um, and, yep. and what do you think this will mean, or what, what do you think they might say about the New Zealand dollar? Yeah, well, I think the cash rate will stay at 2.5%. Um, the RBNZ has already given us a, a, a heads up, really, that we are going to see some tightening next year. Um, I see the markets pricing in about a 40% chance of a rate hike in, Jan uh, in January next year. Um, but this uh, next this week will be um, steady as she goes. There might be some comment about the stronger Kiwi. I mean, um, we've been a little bit weaker against the euro and the pound. Um, I can see why we're probably weaker against the pound. The UK economy is looking a little bit better. Um, but we've been much stronger against the Australian dollar and we're trading at uh, new um, five-year highs against the Australian dollar this morning around 91 cents. So I think that's going to be a, a, little bit, uh, a little bit annoying because ultimately uh, Australia is still our main, well it's our largest export um, destination and uh, a lot of our uh, um, manufacturers export to Australia so that's going to erode uh, the, um, the upside of, of exporting to Aussie and um, maybe take some of the uh, momentum out of uh, the, the more productive side of the economy. And now obviously with all this talk of the US beginning to rein in their tapering, uh, sorry to taper their QE, their quantitative yep. easing, money printing, we've got opposite talk coming out of Japan that they might ramp theirs up. Mm. Um, now obviously you know this, this is, it's been going on in Japan for 
I think several months now, not as long as in the US, but some time. Yep. They've had some success in weakening the yen, the exporters mm. there are getting a boost. But what's behind this talk of them ramping it up and, and how's this going to go down around the world? Yeah, well, the Japanese economy has been a challenging, uh, you know, in a challenging situation for a long time. And, you know, right here, right now, they've got inflation, you know, hardly any inflation. In fact, this ongoing deflation uh, risk. So they have set themselves a target and they've said, hey, we're going to get inflation up to 2% next year. Um, to do that, they're going to have to obviously stimulate uh, the economy significantly through um, hopefully a weaker Japanese yen and, and doing their own money printing. So, um, yeah, the Japanese yen is weaker across the board. The Kiwi Japanese yen is sitting up over 85. Um, and it looks like they're saying, hey, uh, next year it's going to be uh, more of the same. So... Interesting. I mean, you know, on one hand, you've got the U.S. talking about tapering, but you know, Japan is still the third largest economy in the world, and they're going to be uh, well and truly printing money next year. Um, go all the way up to uh, to Europe, and the ECB are still um, talking about maybe even a, a negative uh, interest rate to try and you know keep stimulating their economies. But um, so yeah, there is still plenty of money out there, and and the global central bankers continue to uh, you know to, to provide it uh, quite willingly. So um, yeah, whilst there is a little bit of tightening going on there in the uh, the global bond markets, it's it's not all that tight yet. And if we um, if I ask you to put to, to, to get your crystal ball out now, um, so you're 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 expecting that uh, the Fed won't taper at the FOMC meeting just before Christmas. Um, what do you actually think is going to happen next year then? At some point they will? And uh, just talking more generally in, in terms of uh, what, what do you expect from currencies next year? Yeah, I think um, ultimately the Fed will start tapering next year. I think they're a little bit behind uh, the curve. Um, but uh, it is what it is. They've been very cautious this year. They wanted to see this, this really sustainable recovery in the US economy, which we are seeing. If you look at employment, you look at housing, manufacturing, um, a lot of the key hard indicators in the US are doing very well. Their um, GDP growth last week coming in at a um, annual annualised rate of 3.6%. So they're they're essentially one of the strongest economies in the world at the moment. But they've got uh, this, still this very ultra loose monetary policy. Um, I, I think you're going to get a stronger economy. Interest rates will start to go up. I think the the ultimate driver there is going to be data. I think the market is starting to to lose a little, not so much confidence in what the Fed say, but there's so many different opinions within the the Fed. So you get guys that come out that are quite hawkish, guys that come out that are more dovish. There's been more doves in the Fed over the last uh, you know few years, but I think there could be a little bit more of a hawkish change early next year and um, I think the long term rates in the US will go up so US 10 year treasury yields will be up over 3.5% at some stage next year. That will make the differential between the New Zealand dollar and the US dollar even though our rates are going up I think that the long term change in the US will be more meaningful um, and it is already fully priced in uh, in New Zealand at least about 100 basis points of, of rate hikes next year. So. Um, I think the market's going to be a little bit caught behind and the US dollar will ultimately be stronger next year. Hopefully that'll mean that uh, you know everything will um, start to um, start to come off. I mean, the New Zealand dollar is still sitting around the 82 cent mark, which is quite quite strong based on historical averages. Um, I think it would be you know feasible to see it back down into the mid 70s if we did see the uh, the US central bank really start to um, you know remove some of the stimulus and and, and their economic uh, data and those bond yields start to go up. So. Yep. Now there's one elephant in the room we haven't mentioned yet, and that's China. Um, now, um, obviously, everyone's always very interested in what's going on with the Chinese economy. You know, it's such a it's a, such a big economy now. Yep. Um, what impact do you see China having on the rest of the world um, and the currency markets um, over the next year? Well, China started to um, show some real signs of improvement over the last few months, and there were some concerns that there might have been a hard landing in the Chinese economy. They had a, a property market that um, you know was effectively out of control, but they seem to have managed to, to control that. Uh, the liquidity requirements, you know, they've sort of they tightened and then they loosened their monetary policy. But it seems like um, they're on to a, on an even footing. There's some good momentum in the in their economy. The trade balance numbers out of China over the weekend were much stronger than expected. Manufacturing numbers out of China have been have been pretty solid recently, and there is um, from from what we uh, from our understanding um, a focus in China around getting the mix of, of economic growth right. So I think there was a little bit too much focus on 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 property and, and infrastructure, and, and that was uh, you know and that was driving the economy in, in, in a certain way. I think they want to try and get that domestic 
more of the domestic economy going. So um, hopefully that's the case because ultimately it should be more sustainable. Um, and you know it is going to be positive for, for New Zealand because we are a major commodity exporter. I mean our terms of trade. Um, close to 40 year highs, um, and not just dairy but um, you know forestry and meat and, and other products and uh, so that should be good for us ultimately and, and good for our major trading partner Australia. So all those things, I mean um, you would imagine that the New Zealand dollar is going to remain reasonably strong against the European crosses uh, like the euro and the pound um, and remain strong against the yen but I still think that there's room for the US dollar to have a, a little bit more of a, more, more strength next year and against the Australian dollar we've probably got more upside in the short term but I think the Aussie economy should start to turn the corner by the middle of next year and uh, start to come back. Well thanks a lot for that Dan. That's Dan Bell from HiFX resuming our monthly Never a Dull Moment Currencies report and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.